Okay guys, so uh, that was some pretty interesting testing and it might have not seemed too exciting for you guys as the watchers, but I thought I would certainly have enough data points there and through my combined use with the uh, 273 Mini Adamus to talk about it. And honestly, for me, um, this knife is just very, it's, it's very interesting to me because a lot of people, including uh, the Dutch Bushcraft Knife Bros or uh, channel as a whole, did a test on the updated and revised Adamus and they came to the conclusion and they came to the conclusion that the lock on the 275, 273, you know, the uh, the new Adamuses, the Gen 2s, was weak. And for me, I I kind of agree with them, but I kind of don't. And from my personal experience, having tested it and kind of shown its uh, faults and such on camera, I don't really think that the weak, the, the weak point is the lock itself. I think the bug out has given the access lock a bad rap, but rather I think, and it's kind of hard to explain, I'll probably try to do a close up here, but the kind of shank or the tang of the steel that it goes behind the actual kind of folding or pivot portion on the newer Adamuses. And speaking from experience, because I did have a Gen 1 Adamus and it was incredibly strong. So the Gen 2 Adamuses, they have a lot less steel behind the shank or behind, sorry, the shank of the steel is a lot shorter than behind the pivot than on the gen ones and so what i think actually happens here and you guys could kind of try to probably see it as i was trying to kind of suss it out by doing different types of kind of like glancing batoning blows on the spine and i was able to get this thing to consistently unlock when i glanced it and so i think what really is actually happening here is more than just the lock being weak rather it's that the lock is actually able to so when it strikes the lock is getting kind of uh, shocked just enough to the point where it's slipping because really like it's hard to once again show on camera but realistically there's a very little play needed or backwards play needed for this lock to disengage it really has to travel i would say maybe about a quarter back maybe it looks close Closer to halfway back because this is such a short action itself but it needs to just travel about halfway back before it has enough with downward pressure force for it to disengage itself so i think what ends up happening here is more that the lock gets shocked by batoning and that shock kind of causes the blade to come unhinged so you know, you could argue that that is certainly a weakness, but I would say that that's more what's happening because I, like I said, I'm getting inconsistent data, even in just trying to facilitate failures, because on some of this, this is all the same sample, you know, wood here. Now there was a particularly knotted up portion of wood and this knife actually could not baton through it, where it was actually two knots stacked on top of each other. But the thing is, when I put it up just against this sole knot right here, batoned through without lock failure. So ultimately, I don't think that the lock itself when it comes to sheer force is a problem. I think it's more the shock of batoning because with batoning, you're not just adding force or um, you know, you're not trying to test just strength. There's a level of shock to batoning. And so when you have a locking mechanism, oftentimes what can happen is more than just the locking system failing, it might get shocked by the actual strike. So you're not just adding weight slowly and methodically onto the spine of this blade. You're striking it with a certain degree of force, but that degree of force is also shocking it. So that's personally what I think. Hopefully that kind of rambling makes sense. I'm trying to explain it in the best way possible as my use case. Um, now, like I said, the thing that kind of trips me up about this knife is that it is actually quite strong. And from a reasonable standpoint, it's not a horrible wilderness blade. I know that there are a lot of people that have, you know, watched my channel and seen me talk about the 273 or my auto version, the 2750 Auto Adamus. And, you know, I, I do genuinely like them for the most part. It's just that they're, they're really weird. You know, they are tanky enough to handle a lot of this abuse. And once again, it should be noted, you know, 
I got this lock to fail at least a dozen times there, I believe, and there's really no play in it, no more play than there was in the beginning. And so there is just a tiny bit of up and down play um, that's like audible, but not really noticeable or feelable. Like you can't really feel it, but uh, there's just a tiny bit of play, but it was already there from the start. So it's not like this knife is totally loosened up by having the lock fail. That also, again, kind of signals me to it being more of a shock issue, because if you were actually out straining the axis lock, you would probably be deforming the blade tang and or the locking mechanism to the point where you'd have things like lock rock and uh, other issues with you know the pivot of the blade so being that this thing still pivots freely like you can see here you know pretty good pretty easy to open and close and that it still has you know sufficient or just fine you know like there's no noticeable deformation to the lock up um, or there's no additional blade play you know it really seems to me more like it's slipping out now once again that's still problematic and you guys could probably see how i was holding the blade because i was anticipating failure um, and it definitely i would say if you are going to hard use the Benchmade Adamus, either the full size or the uh, small mini Adamus, I would still recommend anticipating for failure because while it will not fail every time, it still fails, I would say about 50% of the time, or at least I should say disengages. And that's not necessarily a danger if it disengages in wood, but I think there was one time where it's come through with the power stroke and I struck it and it busted through the wood and it came down to about here. So I was grateful that I did have, you know, a kind of modified grip on the knife where my fingers, my meaty bits were not, uh, you know, down here. Not to say that it would have got me because once again, I am wearing gloves and it did only come down to here. But the fact that it came down to this point means that it could have come down to this point or even tried to go further and of course cut me. Now, like I said, once again, luckily I'm wearing gloves too so hopefully that wouldn't have happened but i would certainly recommend you know holding the knife more like this if you are going to baton with it just so that you know your meaty bits are not you know in contact with the folding portion of this blade so i do think that this blade is perfectly capable of handling uh, hard use it's just that it does disengage frequently so you just have to be mindful of that now, as to everything else with this blade, it's been just fine for me. It's a very pocketable blade, and originally the thing that really drew me to the Benchmade Mini Adamus was having, you know, a smaller form-factored blade that was a tanky knife. And unfortunately, this knife isn't quite as tanky as I would like it to be, or at least not as reliably, you know, strong as I would like it to be. So it is a little bit of a disappointment, but it still does hold up a lot of its, you know, strength. It is a thicker blade for a folder. Of course, it's made out of crew wear, so it is a hard wearing um, steel that's actually still reasonably easy to sharpen. And um, there's a number of real pros to it, especially, like I said, if you really want a very pocketable um, blade that's easy to carry and that's a reasonably pocketable, reasonably durable, and you know, kind of on the tanky side. Now, like I said, unfortunately, I kind of give this thing a like kind of pass in batoning because you're not really hurting the blade and you're not really destroying it by batoning it, but it does fail. Uh, about 50% of the time to hold lock engagement. So you do need to be cautious and mindful of that. So uh, yeah, so as far as it goes, you know, overall this knife is not the worst, but it's also not the best. I would say that there are definitely other tanky knives out there that I might recommend before this, namely a lot of cold steel like the Formax or the, the Formax Scout or the uh, the Formax Scout or the SR1 uh, or knives along those lines, uh, just because they're, they have the triad lock, so they are going to be notably stronger. Unfortunately, I don't think Cold Steel really makes any folders that are quite this small, but uh, you know, if you are looking for something that does have you know, true strength, that you can actually truly pound on and it is not going to break or falter, uh, this is, those are going to be more along the lines of what you should look for. As for me, as far as the Benchmade 20 or 
273 goes, I'm still going to carry it. And I think that it's nice to have videos like this out there that kind of serve like this is what this knife will do. This is what this knife won't do. And, uh, you know, it's it's certainly not um, great performance. But at the same time, too, I've noticed that a lot of Benchmades here of late, like modern Benchmades, the quality just has not been up to par on them. And certainly... Um, not what Benchmade used to be. So while I do like the knife, it, it certainly is a an attractive looking blade. I love the material, the CPM crew wear. And uh, as far as the actual like edge retention and toughness has been, it's been great in hardware environments or, you know, like uh, hard use environments. It's just been, uh, you know, like the lock system is just too unreliable to really trust it. As for me, so as far as other thoughts go, about the only other thing that I dislike about the modern Benchmade Adamus design is they did increase the fuller, which is this little channel here, that uh, it does go not straight to the actual pivot mechanism, but it does actually go behind the handle. And that is one thing I dislike because if you are hard, if you are hard using this blade, if you are hard using this blade, what that means is that, you know, dirt, dust, grime can use this fuller as an entry point to get closer to your pivot and gum up either your locking mechanism or your pivot. And so that is a little bit of a disadvantage in my opinion, especially if you're like working around sand. Luckily, I'm not, but dust and debris can still uh, enter. And, you know, this just gives you yet another channel for allowing that garbage to get closer to your pivot and locking mechanism. So just a minor thing that I observed with this blade, not a huge fan of it, it's also not a huge deal breaker, but do be mindful of that. Okay guys, that's basically all I have to say about the little Benchmade 273 Adamus or Midi Adamus. It's not a horrible knife, but do keep in mind it does have lock failures or weaknesses. Um, once again, it's not necessarily and or it's not necessarily game breaking but it does have to be accounted for and you may find yourself um cut if you do not so anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out